Hello and welcome back, G-Man in the studio lab. Roland Juno 106, voice number 4 is a lot quieter than the others. I'll boot the synth in service mode by holding key transpose. This way, when I press both poly 1 and poly 2, it shows me the currently sounding voice. To rule out the voice chips, I can swap them for voices 3 and 4. If that's the fault, the issue will follow over to voice 3. It appears voice 4 is still the problem. Now I'm looking at the signal coming out of the waveform chip. The waveform chip is what takes the clocked DCO pulse signal and turns it into the waveforms, pulse, sawtooth, and sub-octave generator. The waveform chip in question handles both voice 3 and 4. Since I can't access the chip pin with my probe, I've clipped onto the diode that uses the same node. After comparing the output for voice 4 and 3, I see they're not the same. It's possible, but not certain, this waveform chip might be starting to fail. The waveform chips are dipped in the same encapsulation material the voice chips are famous for. As the encapsulation starts to age and break down, it can cause issues with components living on the encased ceramic wafer. I've removed the voice board and will remove the voice chips from their sockets for easier access. While I'm not going to show the tedious chip removal, just know. Desoldering components on the Juno 106 must be done very cautiously. This is to avoid lifting very tiny, delicate traces. If you're not sure about anything, there's no shame in taking your instrument to a qualified service technician. These are the replacement waveform chips from Centaur. The waveform chip replacement went well. The new voice chips are now in place, and the voice board is back in the synth. Let's see what happens. Well, the issue still remains. At any rate, I feel a lot better knowing new waveform chips are now installed. But I'm still at square one. Let's go back to the schematics. So I see the voice chip and the waveform chip are now ruled out as suspect. This only leaves one other thing, a non-polar electrolytic capacitor. I'll need to pull the board out again for inspection. Lo and behold, atrocity. This green crest on the leads means absolute capacitor death. I pulled the nonpolar caps for all of the voices, and here's that. They all need to be replaced, like yesterday. Now that's done, the voice board is back in the synth. Let's check it out. Yep, that was it. Voice number four, all situations normal. Big sigh of relief. Makes me wonder if I have any dying capacitors in my other sense. So, thank you for watching once again. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.